Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. We come together under obviously unique and un unlikely, unwelcome circumstances. Yet, today we celebrate Palm Sunday, the beginning of the most holy week of the year. We pray today as we celebrate Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem and his sacred passion, that each of us may begin to enter into the events of this week more fully, that we may understand all that our faith holds for us, and that each of us may be strengthened today by this time of prayer. Let us now open ourselves to God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you live life to the fullest. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you emptied yourself in death on the cross. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose from the dead and lived forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Jesus Christ, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him twelve pieces of silver. For from that time on, he looked for the opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house, I will celebrate the Passion with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus had ordered and prepared for the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written for him. But woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for him if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, my God. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessings, broke it, giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat this. This is my body. 
he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I'll tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you anew in the kingdom of my Father. Then after seeing him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night, all of you, you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith shaken in you, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with him to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter, the two sons of Zebedee, and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here. Keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you will not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is not possible for this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more, found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again, prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returns to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand in his sword, to his sword, drew it, struck the high priest's servants, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot call upon my father? And he will not provide me at the, this moment with more than twelve legions of angels. But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled? Which say that it must come to pass in this way. At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out against the Father with swords and clubs to seize me? 
day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that is, his writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard. Then going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? Why are, they, why are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robe and said, He has blasphemed. What further needs have we of witness? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some were slapping him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is that is striking, who has struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilee. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were with him, were there, this man was with Jesus of Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystander came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately, a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus spoke. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to wept bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bowed to him and let him away handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priest and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why the field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was this was to fulfill what had been said to Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded them. Now Jesus stood before the governor. He was questioning him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he accused 
by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barnabas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas, or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with this righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be, let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out in sin, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. Then the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. And he released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, he led him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered a whole court heart around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak around him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of his cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Syrian named Simeon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gold. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over their, him there. And they placed over his head the writing charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one at his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief, chief priests and the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is a king of Israel. They have come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. Now, if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lemeth, Tabakani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders had heard it said, This boy is crying out to Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a spike. He soaked it in wine and put it in a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest, said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. 
Then Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tomb after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him here were keeping the watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they had saw the earthquake, and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother and the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that had been hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, you remember that this apostle, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders that the grave be secured until the third day. Least his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, he has risen from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go and secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal on the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. We come here on Palm Sunday, entering into the Passion of Christ. We too, at this very moment, are facing our own passion due to the pandemic that has taken over our world. We were unable to come as the children of God to celebrate as a community. We would love to see our church full of our parish family. As we all know, it is not just our parish that is enduring this pandemic. It has affected the whole world. We come here to remember what Jesus did for us, and that is offering himself up for us, his children. As I mentioned, we too are facing our own passion. Now it comes down to how do we respond to this challenge? We have seen so many good from our fellow men coming together, trying to help in any way they can from a distance. Our medical staff and first responders on the front line, risking their own health and that of their loved ones to care of those for those infected. But just as Judas, when he portrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, Unfortunately, there have been individuals who are trying to take advantage of others in this great time of greatest need. We have seen pictures of those who are unable to be with their loved ones in the nursing homes. The heartbreaking stories of families who have lost loved ones and could not be with them in their last moments or even come together to mourn their passing. They are going through their own form of the passion. I have no doubt that Christ is reaching out to those families hurting and to each of us at this very moment to comfort and heal all who are in pain. As we enter into the Holy Week, starting with Palm Sunday, we can walk this trial together, even while keeping social distance. 
We are the children of God. We'll make it through this, even if it means we have to carry our own cross. Just as Christ, we will overcome and rise into a new life as the children of God when this trial has passed. Now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, from light true, true God from true God, God begotten God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all, all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his, his kingdom will have no end. I believe, believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and giver of life, life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, who with, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who, 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 who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. With great confidence, we now place before the Lord these our needs and intentions. For church leaders, both lay and ordained, that they continue to spread the good news of the crucified and risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lead the world's nations, particularly where there is unrest, fear, and continued consequences of the coronavirus, that they commit themselves anew to be ambassadors of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who dedicate their lives to the welfare of others, for healthcare workers, first responders, and community volunteers, that they preserve in spirit of discipline, discouragement or weariness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, for the lonely and isolated, for those who have lost their jobs, for families adapting to the new normal, that we may find hope in Christ to those who are suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, for those in this world, who have died alone for those grieving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, grant what we ask of you in faith. For we make our prayer today in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise of the Lord in his name, for our good and good of all of this holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice, made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we together acclaim. Immaculate Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, St. Edward the Confessor, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, conform our divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today we have begun this Holy Week celebration. Each of you may be wondering, how can I get a hold of Bless Palm? Well, we have to maintain our social distance, but we have Bless the Palms here in church. They will be in the front of the church each day until um, they run out. So we ask you to um, just take one or two, uh, and not a whole lot, but we hope to share them with others. And um, these are unusual circumstances. The death of Jesus was actually a pretty common way of being crucified in the ancient world. But God stepped in and intervened and made a particular way that has brought us life eternal. In the midst of our own suffering, our own embrace of the cross, the burden of it, we must not forget that. That ultimately, death is overcome by life. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Now, mighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to you, God. Thank you.